There's an alarming new CDC survey of high school students finding 42% of them feel sadness or hopelessness and describe it as persistent. Tomorrow, as part of our initiative, CBS-owned stations all across the country are going to exclusively stream the documentary Connecting the Dots, exploring this global youth mental health crisis. And in this movie, young people talk candidly about their mental health struggles. And we warn you, in the preview you're about to show, or about to see, we'll show, teens do so talk about suicidal thoughts. I cared so much about what everyone saw. Not how I felt, but what everyone saw. And I remember I tried to take my own life when I was in eighth grade. And I remember looking at myself and thinking, I hate myself. Like, I just had this, why do I have to be this person? Other people your age are going through the same exact thing. And it's so overlooked that, like, I feel like we just all need to get together and talk about it more. Oh, that person's doing OK. And oh, you know, she's fine or whatever. But people need to hear the truth that most kids our age are not fine. Mm. With us now is Jamie Howard, a senior clinical psychologist at the Child Mind Institute. Um, thank you very much for being here. Uh, Thanks, it's such a, a high stakes topic. Uh, and so many parents are invested. And mm. I think one of the big questions is just what is causing this increase in distress among young people? Mm -hmm. So there's multiple factors, probably. We've always known that puberty in adolescence is a risk factor because of the interplay between hormones and the developing brain. But in addition to that, we now have a layer of the pandemic, which caused a great deal of social isolation and increased reliance on social media for kids to connect with other kids. Part of the task of, of adolescence is to develop an identity, to figure out who am I. And that gets really complicated when social media is your primary way of interacting in the world. And one in three high school girls, according to the CDC, say they have seriously considered attempting suicide. I mean, that's a shocking yeah, right. statistic. That is yeah. shocking. And it's an increase in 60% from over the past 10 years. What's behind that? So again, we think that in part it's social media and the pandemic, but it's also more than that. It's the, it's the culture in which we live. So kids these days are exposed to vast amounts of information that they weren't when we were kids. So yes. I had to actually look for information in a newspaper. They just open <laughs> up their social media and, you know, they see global warming, they see school shootings, they see all sorts of intense information that they're their brains and their development isn't quite ready to synthesize on their own. What struck me about this doc, Jamie, is that it's global. It's all right. over the world. Yeah. And child after child would say, I need help. Child after child would say, I've thought about it. Boys and girls. Boys and girls. And I think one of the things that I thought was so important in the documentary is that they stress time and time again, no matter how dark it gets, no matter how deep you go in that rabbit hole, the sun really does come out and you really can get through it. But when you're in the middle of it, you, one person said, I just wanted the pain to stop. I didn't really want to die, right. but I just wanted the pain to stop. How do you break through when someone is feeling that low and that dark? That's a good question. Yeah, so what we want to do is make sure that kids have access to good treatment. These treatments are very effective. Everything that these kids You're are... You're talking about medication? Well, is I'm that talking what you mean? about psychotherapy and oh, medicine, actually. Okay. So for mild to moderate depression or anxiety, psychotherapy alone is a very ineffective is a very effective intervention. And then when it becomes more severe, it's the combination of the two, medicine and psychotherapy, that we recommend. So there's a treatment called, for example, DBT, that is highly effective for treating teens who have suicidal ideation, is what we call it, thinking about suicide and depressive symptoms. It's a really mm -hmm. active treatment where they learn skills so that when they're distressed, they can call up their therapist for a crisis call, and then they can get like a reminder in that moment, this is how you you can cope with this. We can get through this moment. I saw a, a clip of a kid getting bullied, and um, it was floating around the school. And then from there, it went to the town, the city, and then the clip went viral yeah. all over the world. Um, social media has its benefits. But some of the negatives is that these things can magnify a moment that is already embarrassing. When we were younger, something might happen, a fight might break out. Maybe people but in the everybody classroom. didn't see or the it. school might yeah. talk about yeah. it. It was over. Everybody different didn't nowadays. See it. Yeah. And this pressure from social media seems to be unbearable at times for these kids. So how important is it for parents to know what mm -hmm. social media is doing to our children? Mm -hmm. Such a good point. It's so important for parents to stay connected to their teens. Teens don't always love to stay connected to their parents. It's a time when they want more independence, and yet 
do your very best to lean in and take advantage of natural opportunities. Teens tend to be night owls, so stay up a little bit later. Try not to go to sleep before them because that's when their guard is down. That's when they might be more willing to talk. Try to talk to them when you're doing sort of a parallel activity, driving together, like cl clearing the table after dinner with less eye contact so that it doesn't feel like so much intensity on them. Uh, that's when we can get a little bit little more. informal. Or yes, more informal. Like taking advantage of natural opportunities to connect with them. So teens That's are really always good. looking at their parents and their parents are going to freak out about something, right? right you yeah. don't want to be the parent that freaks out. But yeah. at what point do you freak out and say, yeah. all right, my kid needs help. Yeah, yeah. Really, I got to intervene. Yeah. Well, so you can internally freak out, but externally reach out to your pediatrician, your school psychologist, get them connected to treatment. Because if you are anxious at all, it's better to go and seek an opinion, get an evaluation and find out. We want to err on the side of caution because because these numbers are so big and it is should schools stage. play a bigger role here because yes. so much of the kids most of your time is spent at schools right sometimes your peers are a great sense of joy for you and other times they are your your torturer that's right. that's exactly right we know that mental health utilization increases a thousand fold when we offer mental health services in schools and that is the place to capture these kids and give them basic information about monitoring their mental health all right psychologist Jamie Howard thank you very much thank, thank you, you. Very informative. All right, if you or someone you know is experiencing a mental health crisis, you can get help from the Suicide Crisis Lifeline uh, by calling or texting 988. The Lifeline is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Someone will.